August 6, 1945. A plane is ready to head off for Japan, carrying a single bomb that will destroy a city and kill 70,000 people in an instant. The bomb will launch the atomic age with a fearsome new weapon that will change the world forever. I could sit there and I could look back like this and I'd say, you know, that's an atomic bomb back there. Grace, that's an atomic bomb back there. This is the story of the day they dropped the bomb, told by the people who were there, the team who dropped the atomic bomb, the people who made the bomb, and the people who were in Hiroshima when the bomb fell on their city. Rare survivors who were close to ground zero on that day. I look up the sky and uh, I saw the airplane. When the flash came, I saw the bone on my fingers, just like looking an x-ray. My body was thrown up into the air. And the bang! There was no question that the future of the world was going to be different. In the spring of 1945, the Mariana Islands in the South Pacific are the busiest air bases in the world as America launches around-the-clock bombing raids on Japan. The crew who will drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima are gathering on Tinian Island, recently captured from the Japanese. Tinian will be the launch pad for the first atomic attack on Japan, 1,500 miles away. Crews, some as young as 19, know the hazards of war. Planes limp in from bombing raids with injured and dying crews. The assignment to drop the first atomic bomb is an entirely new challenge with unknown dangers and unimaginable responsibilities. Now, two young American airmen are about to discover that they will have a crucial role in a mission that will change history. Twenty-four-year-old Dutch Van Kirk thinks his combat missions are over. Then he gets a surprise phone call from an old commander, Colonel Paul Tibbets. He says, this Paul Tibbets? I says, Hell, I know who it is. You're the only guy who would call me at 5 o'clock in the morning. He says, I got a new group. And he says, we're going overseas. I can't tell you what we're going to be doing. But if it works, we're going to either end or shorten the war. And I want you for my group navigator. Tibbets has also contacted another old crewman, bombardier Tom Farabee. Farabee and Van Kirk have flown regularly with Tibbets in bombing raids over Nazi-occupied Europe. They call themselves the Three Musketeers. I won't say we were cherry-picked for anything except drinking. Tibbets' elite new squadron is the 509 Composite Group, codenamed Silver Plate. The squadron's assignment is to drop the atomic bomb. The story behind the dropping of the first atomic bomb begins four years earlier. A surprise Japanese attack on the American base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii brings the United States into World War II. Undeclared war on the United States. 
the crime of the century, murder of the innocent. For scientists like Robert Crone, a 25-year-old physicist at the University of Wisconsin, it's a trigger that will lead him to work on the atomic bomb. The Pearl Harbor attack was a terrible, terrible thing, all without warning. And then following that, there are many, many atrocities from the Japanese all over the world. The newsreels of the time reflect the bitter hostilities of a world at total war. In their uncivilized methods of sadistic persecution, were they rivals of the Nazis in Europe? If you have lived in that time, you had an entirely different feeling about the Japanese than people do today. Before the attack on Pearl Harbor, Adolf Hitler's armies had swept across Europe and into the Soviet Union. The Allies are in retreat across the world. President Franklin Roosevelt is warned that the Nazis could be planning a nuclear weapon. In December 1941, Roosevelt authorizes the development of an atomic bomb, codenamed the Manhattan Project. From 1942, the Manhattan Project will expand to employ 130,000 people across America and around the world, working in total secrecy to build an atomic bomb. President Roosevelt dies before the bomb can be tested. Harry S. Truman took the momentous oath of office as President of the United States. With a world at war, he accepted the gravest responsibility in world history. The Manhattan Project is reaching a critical stage, and the new president must quickly understand the terrible responsibilities of the new weapon. George Elsie is a young naval officer working in the communications center at the White House. President Truman knew absolutely nothing about the uh, Manhattan Project until after he'd been president for about 10 days. And the ch chiefs of staff of the Army and Navy came to the White House and briefed him at, in full. And at the end of the session, uh, they asked, uh, should we continue? And the answer was emphatically yes. And will, do you think we should use the bomb if it works? And the answer again was emphatically yes. With Berlin in ruins, Nazi Germany surrenders. The ending of the war in Europe has eliminated the prime target for the atomic bomb. But let us not forget for a moment the toils and efforts that lie ahead. Japan, with all her treachery and greed, remains unsubdued. The war with Japan is still raging, with American casualties mounting as they fight across the Pacific, island to island. The American assault on Iwo Jima sees some of the bloodiest fighting of the war. The island was defended by thousands of Japs, every one of whom was prepared to die for his emperor. The Japanese defenders refuse any thought of surrender. And for the first time, Marines lose more men killed and wounded than the Japanese. U.S. commanders now predict that an invasion of Japan could cost more than a million Allied casualties. President Truman decides that the atomic bomb should be dropped on a Japanese city as soon as it is ready. there's still no bomb. In the empty desert of New Mexico, at a site called Trinity, populated only by rattlesnakes and tarantulas, scientists and construction teams prepare for the first ever test of an atomic bomb. There were two versions of the bomb. There was the little boy and the fat man. 
Now, the little boy is actually the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima, and the fat man is the bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki. Scientists are confident that the uranium-fueled little boy will work. But now they need to test the plutonium-fueled fat man. The reason for running the test on the fat man was that plutonium was a brand new element that had never been known before. But there is still barely enough plutonium in the world to fuel the first bomb. And even after two years of intensive work, no one is sure what might happen. Jack Abbey is a photographer with the Manhattan Project. It was a lot of cross fingers, and <laughs> there was not all that confidence. They uh, actually started a bet, and uh, well, the bet went all the way from zero failure, complete failure, <laughs> to setting the universe on fire. Just four days before the test, the plutonium core of the bomb, the size of an orange, arrives from the Los Alamos laboratories on the back seat of an army sedan. A scientist describes it as warm, like a live rabbit. As the moment to detonate the bomb approaches, set for 4.30 a.m. on July 16, 1945, scientist Lily Hornig is watching for the explosion from a distant mountaintop. As the minutes tick by, she's sure the bomb is a dud, and she heads for her car. And as I put out my hand for the ignition key, this thing went off in front of me. It was really an incredible sight. I don't know what any of us might have expected. The heavens were boiling. Jack Abbey gets the only color photo of the first atomic explosion. In just 21 days, an atomic bomb will fall on Hiroshima. The day after the Trinity test, President Truman is at the Potsdam Conference in Germany for discussions with Churchill and Stalin about the shape of the post-war world. Trinity gives Truman a massive advantage at the conference. He has Jack Abbey's photo of the Trinity explosion and plans to shock Stalin with the news of the atomic bomb. Truman told uh, Stalin that he had a powerful new weapon that he hoped would end the war quickly, and Stalin said he hoped so too. What we did not know was that the Soviets, through their espionage, knew everything that we were doing in atomic research. From Potsdam, Truman issues a declaration demanding that Japan's forces must surrender or face prompt and utter destruction. If they do not now accept our terms, they may expect a reign of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. Japan ignores all warnings. Faced with a bloody invasion of Japan, Truman authorizes the dropping of the atomic bomb. On July 26, 1945, the vital ingredients for the bomb arrive on the Pacific island of Tinian. Paul Tibbets, Dutch Van Kirk, Tom Farabee, and the 509 Squadron are now on Tinian preparing for the atomic attack on Japan. The three musketeers are together again. They rehearse with non-nuclear replica bombs called pumpkins. 
just days before the atomic mission, Dutch Van Kurt's crew dropped two of the pumpkin bombs armed with conventional explosives. Neither one of them exploded. We got back to Tinian, and I was thinking, for Christ's sakes, we're going to drop one of these, and we still can't get an explosion. Firebombing by B-29s has taken a huge toll of Japan's major cities. Since an incendiary attack on Tokyo in March 1945 killed 100,000 people in one night. Hundred and forty thousand more have died in other cities. Hiroshima seems an obvious target. But although it's a city with over three hundred thousand people, in the summer of nineteen forty five it has seen almost no air raids. Setsuko Thurlow is a thirteen year old high school student living in Hiroshima. We knew it's just a matter of time. Even the smaller cities have been attacked. We were beginning to feel jittery. What's going on? The sparing of Hiroshima seems even more surprising since the city is a major army base for around 40,000 soldiers. Takashi Tanamori is just seven years old, but he is also aware of the fear in Hiroshima. I felt it's not if America will come to attack the Hiroshima, but the when, how soon. I think fearfulness was just gripped the heart of the Hiroshima citizens. <laughs> In Hiroshima schools and across the country, there are daily air raid drills. But the bombers are saving the city for something special. Little did we know they had given the instruction to your airmen to keep Hiroshima intact. Intact for what? The long, brutal Pacific campaign against an enemy determined to fight to the death has brought America to a pivotal moment. The White House must choose between an invasion of Japan that would likely cause hundreds of thousands of casualties on both sides, or a new weapon that could end the war in a single stroke. U.S. forces have ordered 500,000 Purple Heart medals in anticipation of an invasion, an indication of their fears. On August 5th, 1945, the bomb codenamed Little Boy rolls out for loading into Paul Tippett's B-29. I was down there at the airplane on the day they loaded it. They got it out to the runway and we located the uh, airplane over the pit. Paul just says, uh, I want a name for the airplane. I've been thinking about my mother's name, and his mother was a marvelous lady on my name. We says, oh, well, why don't you send a painter down to do it? So we did. Crews about to head off on the atomic mission witness regular crashes on the island's runways, too short for the heavily loaded B-29s. The crashes are an unsettling reminder of the potential disaster for the crew of Enola Gay. I never expected to live through this war. Never expected to. Here I am, 93 years old. Hell, I should have died years ago.
The takeoff of Enola Gay is scheduled for 2.45 a.m. Rumors of a special mission bring curious spectators, but the fact of the atomic bomb is still a total secret. Oh, we had everybody's brother's uncle up there. They all wanted to shake hands, all wanted to wish us well. The photo of Tibbetts just before takeoff will go around the world. But what looks like a cheery wave is in fact a gesture of frustration as the Enola Gay stands on the edge of its fearsome mission. We were sitting on the ground waiting to take off and uh, the photographers hadn't moved all their equipment yet. So Paul was motioning them to get their damn equipment out of the way. Enola Gay rolls down the runway at 2.45 a.m. as scheduled, but the liftoff is hazardous. Carrying extra fuel to balance the five-ton bulk of Little Boy in its bomb bay, the plane is overloaded by 15,000 pounds and stretched to its limits. Dutch Van Kirk plots a course towards Iwo Jima with his calculator and celestial navigation. Tibbets goes on the intercom to tell his entire crew for the first time that they're carrying an atomic bomb. As the plane approaches Iwo Jima, where it will turn towards Japan, the Enola Gay links up with its two supporting aircraft. At Iwo Jima, we formed up, Nola Gay in the lead, the great artiste with instruments on the right wing tip, and the necessary evil on the left wing tip as the photo plane. The three planes are flying well above the ceiling of Japanese fighters, so there's no risk of attack. At 7.09 a.m., an air raid warning blares across Hiroshima. As so often, nothing happens, and the all clear is soon announced. So we went to school that morning, and we just, classmates and I just running up to school. And we just joke about that, you know, again, having an air raid in the morning. At 7.30 a.m., Tibbets confirms the target, Hiroshima. The people of Hiroshima are about to pay a terrible price for Japan's militarism. All of these survivors were close to ground zero when the bomb fell. These are their stories. We were anxious and fearful, and uh, we couldn't wear pajamas. We just went to bed with the clothes on because with the moment uh, notice and the air raid sirens started going, then we had to dash to the shelter. 7.40 a.m., Enola Gay reaches its bombing height, 30,700 feet. It's a cloudless summer day. Setsuko Thurlow and her schoolmates are training at Army headquarters. Major Yanai gave us a pep talk. Girls, this is the time you prove your loyalty to the Emperor. Do your very best for Emperor's sake. Yes, sir, we will. At 12 minutes past eight, Tibbets begins the bombing run. The chosen target is an unmistakable T-shaped bridge in the city center. We're approaching the target. Tom says, I got the target, which was the T-bridge. I went up and looked over his shoulder, and I says, that is the target. Paul Timmons looked over his shoulder and says, that is the target. We agreed. That is the target. 
Bombardier Tom Farabee is now flying the Enola Gay to the target through the bomb site. I look up the sky and uh, I saw the airplane. That day, Hiroshima was such a beautiful blue sky, no cloud, and uh, oh, the airplane is a shiny silver, and it looks like a picture. Working in an underground army communications center, 14-year-old Yashi Aka gets a message about the approaching American bombers. I thought, what? They're already over Hiroshima? Just at that moment, the air raid siren went off. At 8.15 a.m. and 15 seconds, little boy falls from the Enola Gay towards Hiroshima. We are playing again that morning, hide and seek. And I was just counting the number from one, two, three. It took 43 seconds for the bomb to reach 1,800 feet. So we were all counting. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. And we had concluded that the bomb was a dud. And when I came to about seven, then a flash in the sky. I never saw that such pure white. Suddenly there was a bright flash in the airplane. That was the only indication that we had that the bomb had gone off. When the flash came, I saw the bone on my fingers, just like looking an x-ray. It was like I was thrown into a massive blast furnace. I was working right by the window, and an incredible light came in. It was glittering and bright white. The explosion of Little Boy generates a temperature of 5,400 degrees at ground zero, instantly killing around 70,000 people. The fireball flash imprints the scorched shadows of victims on the surfaces of the city. The entire sound of the universe just exploded, and the bang! That sound uh, I almost uh, spread in my skull, and uh, that sound is so loud. A shockwave fans out from ground zero, traveling at two miles a second. We get the turbulence, all kind of turbulence. We're running to beat the devil to get away from it. Because of the tornado-like blast, all the buildings were being leveled. When I regained the consciousness, I found myself under the collapsed building in the total darkness and total silence. And I thought, this is it. I am going to die. Soon, fires are consuming the ruined city. Takashi Tanamori regains consciousness in his burning classroom. Pitch dark, you cannot see your own hand. And I tried to move, but I could not. Then uh, I began to smell the heat. Those of us who have windows can see the atomic bomb cloud. We cannot make any definite relationship between what had been there and what was now there. All we know is 
Underneath there, they were probably all dead. It had to be with that blast. Paul Tibbetts tells his crew on the intercom, boys, you have just dropped the first atomic bomb in history. The shaky amateur footage taken by a scientist on the photo plane, The Necessary Evil, is the only surviving movie of the Hiroshima cloud as the official camera failed. This is a picture that I took with my private camera about one minute after detonation. All we saw was black dust, black dirt, all destroyed. So Paul says, we may as well go home. As the Enola Gay heads back to Tinian, it leaves Hiroshima struggling to comprehend what has happened to the city and to its people. All of our witnesses were less than 2,400 yards from ground zero, some less than half a mile. It was so dark because of the smoke and dust being sucked up in the mushroom cloud and the ghostly procession. I say ghostly because they just didn't look like human beings. Their hair was just all standing up towards the sky. They were burned and blackened and swollen. Parts of the bodies were missing. And uh, they were covered with blood and clothes were tattered. And the flesh and skin hanging from their bones. Yashi Aka stumbles to the door of the communications bunker. Climbing on top of the bunker, she is stunned to discover her city in ruins. There was a soldier on the ground suffering from burns. I thought, there's someone on the ground, and ran towards him. He noticed me and said, half groaning, we've been hit by a new type of bomb. A new type of bomb. A local photographer finds a huddle of burned people on the morning of August 6th, trying to soothe their wounds with cooking oil. After seeing his classmates consumed by fire, seven-year-old Takashi Tanamori is pulled from the ruins of his burning school by a soldier and carried into the city. There was a man, I think he was a man, unrecognizably burned, scarred, and marred. You can't tell, it. but I knew that was a man. He says to soldiers who's clutching me in his arm, he said, water, water, please, water. And the soldier just... Eleven-year-old Tetsushi Yonazawa and his mother are only 750 yards from ground zero, shielded in a crowded tram. All the other passengers are killed by the blast. <laughs> My mother and I were surrounded by people, so we were uninjured. I knocked my head and got shards of glass in my hair. But at that time, I didn't notice them. My mother grabbed my hand and said, Are you all right, Tetsushi? When I replied that I was okay, she said that we should get off the tram. Don't 
Yashi Aka returns to her post in the communications bunker, desperate to send out the news of what has happened in Hiroshima. She finds one working phone and reaches an officer in regional headquarters. Hi. I said, yes, the whole of Hiroshima has been annihilated. The person at the other end said, I don't understand what you are saying. What do you mean, annihilated? As I thought about how I could possibly make him understand, I remembered what the soldier on the embankment said. We've been hit by a new type of bomb. So I said to him, we've been hit by a new type of bomb. Yashi Aka's message is the first news of what has happened in Hiroshima. As the Enola Gay and the two escort planes head away on the long flight back to Tinian, the crews can still see the mushroom cloud for more than a hundred miles. Today, there's very little chatter. We were all stunned. We did not know what to think. The tail gunner kept reporting to the rest of the crew, I can still see the cloud, I can still see the cloud. I was thinking, this war is over. The Japanese cannot continue to fight this war. On the USS Augusta, President Truman is heading back from the Potsdam Conference for America, anxious for news of the raid on Hiroshima. I took the Army message to him about the dropping of the bomb. And, uh, Truman was having lunch with uh, the enlisted men of the crew when I handed the message to him. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. We have spent more than $2 billion on the greatest scientific gamble in history, and we have won. The Japanese began the war from the air at Pearl Harbor. They have been repaid many-fold. In Hiroshima, the survivors of the bombing are becoming aware of the magnitude of the nightmare around them. There was a large military training ground covered with a dead body and dying people begging for water. We tore off our blouses and soaked them in the water and then rushed back and put those pieces of cloth over the mouth of dying people. They just, they just sucked the moisture out of that. We kept this task all day long. Fleeing from the fires consuming the city, Takashi Tanamori is carried to a river by the soldier who has rescued him from the ruins of his school, where all his friends are dead. Amid the desperate crowds of injured survivors, the seven-year-old boy hears a familiar voice. Then I hear the name, Takashi, Takashi. I tell you, that was the most the sweetest the sound, most the strongest sound that I ever heard. My name had been called by my daddy. My daddy was looking for me, Takashi, Takashi. After over 12 hours in the air, Enola Gay is back on Tinian Island. There is no word of a Japanese surrender. Tibbets is awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. To complete the first atomic mission, the exhausted crews are summoned to a debriefing. They came to me and they says, what time did you drop the bomb? 
The intelligence officer looked at me like, why were you late? Grace, I was six seconds late. On the evening of August 6th, the survivors in Hiroshima are trying to take stock of the city's casualties. Countless thousands of people are injured and close to death. When the first I saw myself was, I looked like a monster. Big eyes and thick nose and no eyebrows and pinky face. And my lips were sort of up and down, open. The retina burner had a hole in my left eye. And therefore, when I see the sun, sometimes by accident, I see the sun. I, somebody stick that arrow through my brain. See, they think any day I would die. But I survived it. When the darkness fell, We just sat on the hill, feeling stunned from witnessing the massive death and suffering. And without feeling anything, we just watched the entire city burn. That's my story for the day. Despite the devastation of Hiroshima by the atomic bomb, there is no surrender from the Japanese. Two days later, the Soviets declare war on Japan. Then, on August 9, 1945, the plutonium-fueled Fat Man is dropped on Nagasaki. 40,000 people are killed instantly and the city is reduced to ruins. Six days later, the emperor overrules the Japanese military, who are determined to fight on. In his first ever radio broadcast, he talks of a new and most cruel bomb and announces the surrender that ends the Second World War. We had the atomic bombs not worked. We were going to go firebomb every major Japanese city. The loss of life would have been incredibly greater than uh, the two atomic bombs. Yes, it was horrible. Everything about war is horrible. But it would have been far more horrible if the bombs had not ended the war suddenly as they did. We have been brainwashed. So people just uh, couldn't believe it, stunned, numbed. But I just felt, thank goodness the war is now ended. Now I can wear my pajamas to go to bed. Over the decades since the bombing of Hiroshima, tens of thousands of people have died from the effects of radiation. Today, the center of Hiroshima, where the bomb fell, is a peace park. The skeleton of a single building bears witness to what happened here. Some of the survivors of that day have become activists for peace. My earthly life mission is 
share the peace, promoting the peace through forgiveness. Without the forgiveness, human hearts are going to wither or destroy. Well, I think we're all more aware of life. We're all aware that if an atomic bomb is aimed at you, you're dead. Whether we learn to live with it and learn to live well with it is still, I think, to be decided. <laughs>